Hi, this is Elaine Newberry and I would like to present an article today that I was able to read on um, adolescent literacy by Nancy Marcan Martella and Ronald Martella. Uh, the name of the article is Important Features of Effective Adolescent Literacy Instruction. And opposed to having you sit down and just read through this article, I'm trying to give you the highlight points and some points that I feel like you could take away um, to incorporate in your lessons um, every day in your adolescent literacy classes. Um, we really need to understand that adolescent literacy really discuss is really from grades four through twelve. In the early elementary, um, really the focus of reading is learning to read, actually learning how print on text. Um, but after that, we talk about more reading to learn in grades four and above. So with this whole article is discussing how you can improve their opportunities to read, to actually learn better in your content area classes. Reading Next was an, um, a publication that was put out that addressed 15 components for um, instructional organization and practices for adolescent readers. These components included direct, explicit, and comprehension instruction, effective principles embedded in and content, motivation and self-directed learning, text-based co cooperative learning, strategic tutoring, diverse text, intensive writing, technology, ongoing formative assessment, extended time for literacy, professional development, ongoing summative assessments of students and programs, and teacher teams, leadership, and comprehensive and coordinated literacy programs. Okay. As we come down, we're going to look at the next part that says academic literacy. Academic, academic literacy is the kind of reading proficiency needed to draw meaning from content, area, and advanced narrative text. Um, as we are looking at academic literacy, we also want to talk about the state assessed reading proficiencies, such as making inferences, learning vocabulary, making text comparison, summarizing main ideas within text, and also the type of literacy that you would need to be able to t read and understand, understand state assessments. As I made a note over here to the side, this particular area seems to be related to the fact that one of the new genres that has come out recently or has really become a um, more well-known genre is the concept of testing genre and students need to understand how to take tests, how to analyze and how to take tests. So reading and understanding state assessments is part of um, academic literacy. As we move on down, Greenleaf and all made a statement that is now widely recognized that even skillful reading at early grade levels will not automatically translate into higher level academic literacy. So what can we do as teachers to improve this? First of all, we want to look at our content area and expository text. Adolescent liter lit learners can learn, can read and decode simple text. And most of the time you'll find that. They can do that. They do seem to read well. But they don't have, they don't e able to um, handle more complicated content area materials. So we really want to notice um, as we get into the text complexity and how quickly it begins to rapidly um, accelerate beyond the elementary years, what can we do, particularly expository text? They're much more difficult text that you're going to find in your content area classes. Over here, I made a few um, notes about why re stu reasons students struggle with expository text. One, they've had fewer experiences with it. The material is often denser. Um, organization is hard to follow. Vocabulary is very technical. Uh, difficult to decode the multisyllabic words. And then we, we have assumptions that are made, or the textbooks have assumptions that are made, that the students already have that background knowledge to make the connections they need to build their comprehension. After, also in uh, adolescent years, not only content area text is more difficult, 
and expository texts, but our advanced narrative texts are much more difficult. Advanced narrative text involves nonfiction, such as biographies and memoirs, and fiction, such as fables and novels. But many adolescent um, students still have trouble reading um, the narrative text. Uh, it becomes increasingly more complex. You often have um, multiple lines going on there. You may have multiple problems in the story with multiple solutions. You have various characters and you have dynamic characters and static characters. And so as they begin to get into these more complex texts, the lack of knowledge just about narrative text structure really hinders their understanding of these texts. They also have fewer opportunities to read the more uh, complex text if they are struggling readers. They keep them into simpler text that's going to have a more straightforward storyline. So let's talk about how adolescents overall have performed in reading. In 2011, the National Assessment of Education Progress findings found in students 8 and 12, excuse me, 8, 4, and um, also in 12, because I have that reported down here also, were released. 34% of fourth grade students scored at or above proficient levels. Eighth grade, 34% scored at or above. And for 12th grade, 38%. Notice that we're not even hitting the 50% mark yet on students that are at or above proficient level. So we've got work to do. Conclusions can be drawn from this information. Students need increased opportunities to examine literacy and informational text. Students should discuss text with a whole class setting. They must learn those important foundational reading skills so they can locate and recall important information. They need to integrate and interpret their findings from what they've read and critique and evaluate text, viewing it from various perspectives. Often our most common problem is that they are not able to comprehend what they read. So let's talk about how we can improve the comprehension. We want to look at the areas that we are going to look at for um, adolescent text. When we are talking about adolescent literacy instruction, we are looking at these five components. Word study, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and motivation. Whereas in K3, we are looking more at the phonemic awareness, phonics, Fluency does match the same, vocabulary is the same, and comprehension is the same. So there are some change, some things that are the same, some things that are different from in effective adolescent um, instruction. So let's talk about the five areas that are in the effective adolescent literacy instruction. The first is word study. We want to be able to read words accurately. We want the students to have, be able to word analyze and word recognition skills that benefit them at any age. We also want them to be able to decode and comprehend multi-part words as far as understanding meaning. So those are those multi-syllabic words. We want this to have explicit systematic instruction that can teach them how to break up the multi-part words or multi-syllabic words into parts. The next component is fluency. Fluency targets how accurately, quickly, and with proper expression someone's reading. If they do not read accurately, quickly, and with proper expression, this hinders their understanding. One strategy you can use to, to improve this is by giving guided oral reading and repeated readings. I'm going to read through this. This is a chunk here that I've highlighted, but it is important. Um, Boardman and all recommends that you want to track students' progress in fluency and provide frequent free feedback. Provide models of fluent reading through guided oral reading experiences. Allow students to self-monitor their fluency and chart their performance. Use teacher-selected passages that include vocabulary that has been studied and previously taught and passages that can be read independently. And we want to gradually increase the difficulty of the passages as the students demonstrate in performance. We also want to use repeated oral reading with feedback. The best method of improving fe uh, fluency is through repeated oral um, readings. Our next component is vocabulary. This is definitely a hot button topic. Um, we talk a lot about vocabulary in, in um, content area and adolescent literacy. Vocabulary instruction needs to be explicit and this is what is one thing that is 
key that maybe we are missing sometimes. We are not giving the explicit instruction we need to be sure that students are really understanding words. Specific instruction includes three different tiers. Tier one is usually words that they already know. Tier two are words that often appear in text and are common, but they're more complex. And tier three are more specific to content areas. We want to post the targeted words in the classroom, oftentimes through word walls or other methods to post them in the classroom. We want to use student-friendly definitions. We want to place the words in context and make connections with familiar things. We want to use games and concept maps to help them gain familiarity. And then teachers should ask questions and incorporate new vocabulary into everyday language. As we get into more vocabulary, we're talking about word learning strategies. As we talk about word learning, we're talking about those prefixes, suffixes, morphology, uh, context clues, and reference aids. We want to teach them the different components of words and uh, making unnecessary memorization of words. If they understand components such as un or re, then they can begin to break up and figure out words quicker rather than having to always just memorize vocabulary words. We want them to understand context clues. So many times that is an area that is the well, is how it is tested in genres, on well, the testing genre, is that it's using context clues, is what, how they have to find the meaning within the um, passages that they're reading. And then of course we want them to use reference aids, such as glossaries, dictionaries, online dictionaries, computer-based resources, um, so that they can find meanings of unknown words. The next area of adolescent literacy is comprehension. At the middle school and high school level, reading comprehension is arguably the most important component of reading instruction. Some components under comprehension activate their prior knowledge, make some connections for it with them using headings and concepts. We want them to make text-to-text -text connections. Maybe they've read another book that reminds them of the, what they're reading right here. Text-to-world, maybe they saw something on TV that made them connect. A lot of times History Channel or Discovery Channels will give you um, connections to that. Text to self. Maybe they had something that happened to them before. Maybe they had an experiment that they've done in another grade that reminds them of what they're talking about now. Another way to do it is, is it, another way to increase comprehension is by using mental imagery. Teaching students to develop images of the text. In other words, make a mental picture, make a movie in your head. Text structure, understanding, comparing and contrasting, problem solving, uh, cause and effect, order and sequence. When students learn to recognize these things in the text, then they begin to understand how the text is organized. And of course, description and list. The story structure of a narrative, um, understanding characters, settings, events, conflict, comics, and resolution. And what's more is it gets more complicated, multiple ones of these, multiple events, multiple conflicts, multiple climaxes. Um, comprehension monitor is when the students monitor their own comprehension and determine what they understand while they're reading. Um, so many times we as adults know how this is. We get to the end of a passage and we haven't understood what we've read and because we were not monitoring our comprehension as we were going through it. Teaching students explicitly that that is part of comprehension is often a piece that is missing from um, adult or excuse me adolescent literacy. And then question generation. Not only having the students ask answer questions that are asked of them by a teacher, but really by having the students generate their own questions. When they generate their own questions, they not only have to understand, but they have to be able to interpret and apply information. Summarizing. Summarization um, is again an explicit thing that you want to teach. Um, children don't ne or adolescents don't necessarily understand sim simply how to summarize. They really need to be able to have a clear understanding of how to tell a beginning, middle, and end of a story. And then text features, particularly of a nonfiction, perhaps headings, subheadings, table of contents, index, charts, tables, diagrams. All these pieces will give them clues to comprehension. Note taking is another way to do comp to handle comprehension. Um, it really provides students a tool for recording and connecting, analyzing, and personalizing the key ideas. The last one is probably the one that's most interesting to me is the motivation concept. 
as adolescents get into reading, they're now not reading anymore for the teacher or to please the teacher. They really are deciding to read because they want to read, because it is becoming something that they realize they enjoy. Uh, decreased motivation really has a spiraling effect on struggling students. The less motivated they are, the less they read, the less they read, the less the further far uh, the further behind they fall. So we really want to include or improve our student motivation. I've made a text note here. Ways to increase motivation for adolescents is provide them some goals. Provide sp student autonomy. In other words, let them choose what they would like to read. Use interesting text. And increase the social interactions um, during related to reading. Twitter is one of the most, the easiest ways to begin to have students have discussions about text in, our, in a closed Twitter account. Um, it's a great way to include that technology and social aspects. Student motivation increases when students are successful. And then one approach that ensures successful responding and keeps students motivated is computer-assisted instruction. Again, we've got game-type concepts, but we also have a lot of things nowadays with the social media that can really improve or inc uh, increase student motivation on their reading. A few other things I just want to um, discuss real quickly as we close up here. Other t instructional considerations. One of the things the teachers need to as they're considering um, struggling readers or adolescent uh, literacy, we want to be sure we're thinking about that Bloom's taxonomy and metacognition, graphic organizers, reciprocal teaching, and teacher read-alouds. Um, Bloom's taxonomy helps students understand that more complex questions and higher order thinking. This is a great way to go back to the concept of having them generate their own tech questions. Up back up here, we talked about this, question generalization. If we teach them to use Blooms as they're creating their own um, questions, they are thinking even higher order thinking skills and understanding comprehension better. Metacognition is understanding what you're thinking about, how you're making your own connections, what strategies you're using. And when students understand what they're doing and they're able to verbalize that, then they become deeper, better readers and comprehenders. Uh, graphic organizers is well proven that is a, a great way to um, help students remember, organize, and identify information. They may include story maps or Venn diagrams, various types of word charts um, that can increase comprehension. Reciprocal teaching is a concept where they, be, they teach um, others. They, they go back and they teach their student, their friends, their peers. Um, teachers begin by the modeling, but then the teacher fades this, scaffolds this instruction. Um, and then students may use any one of these four to go back and uh, teach their peers, questioning, clarifying, predicting, and summarizing. Um, positive effects and comprehension were noted during reciprocal teaching. Reciprocal teaching has been around for quite some time and continues to show that it is an um, effective way to teach comprehension. As you look over here, I do have a note again over here about reciprocal teaching. It relates to that previous point that we talked about earlier about students reading with motivation with adolescents, making reading and comprehension a social activity when they have to go back and teach their peers. Again, we're involving that social concept, which is really key for many adolescents. And then we hear so much these days about teacher read-alouds and text-based discussions. I think teachers understand that read-alouds motivate their students. Um, again, Fisher, Frey, um, they've pulled in flood and lap here, but this is a, continues to be a concept that is over and over again in the literature um, about having read-alouds and how much it can improve student learning. Um, our focus here is on gaining meaning. and. Interestingly enough, when the students have text-based discussions and read-alouds, 8th graders have more frequent class discussions, score higher than compared to their peers. Um, also, you, it will improve vocabulary and overall reading achievement. 
So in summary, um, reading is the most important skill that students can acquire in school. Um, I urge you, as you are looking at this article, to take the highlighted pieces and look for something that is a piece or a part that you would like to incorporate in your content area instruction. As you get into that one area, then maybe you can begin to advance into something else. One of the most important things I think that from this article that I think is, is maybe something we don't think of often is that social motivation component that we definitely want to increase and improve with the adolescent readers. I uh, hope you enjoyed this article and have a nice day.